Hey there, it's Fashti Sarah. Welcome back to Post Blog. If this is your first time listening, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like button, follow button, share button, all the buttons to stay connected with the Post Blog podcast. And for those of you who this is not your first time, welcome back. Happy Wednesday. If you've tuned in, which you probably have because you're listening to this right now. I hate when I start rambling like this. But anyways, if you're tuning in, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for all the support, all the love, all the encouragement. I've received a lot of messages from a ton of people, people that I know, people that I don't know, which is really encouraging. And it helps me to realize, you know, Vashti, just you're doing you're doing what the Lord has placed on your heart because it wasn't anything that I dreamed of. I would have never dreamt in a million years that I'd be weekly pumping out a podcast, never in a million years. But I felt the Lord had placed that on my heart. And uh, for those of you who know my story or who who know the why behind the what, essentially it was, Lord, I'm going to do this out of obedience to help, even if it's one person and that one person could be me. And I can be completely honest, I have been helped even through my own podcast, weird and wild, but really and truly I have, especially with having guests on the show or guests on the podcast. It's been phenomenal hearing other people's heart, other people's perspective on what I've written um, on my blog. So yeah, I just want to thank y'all. This is um, actually or technically the last episode for this season, but we will have a bonus episode like we typically do. And that episode will be none none other than my husband. We'll just be talking about marriage, how marriage has been pretty laid back. So if you're in a relationship or aspiring to be in a relationship, I encourage y'all to listen to that episode. It'll be fun. It'll be, you know, like I said, super laid back, super fun. But anyways, let's jump into today's topic. Today, we're going to talk about what is in your cup. And it it stemmed off of a Facebook post that I saw uh, from one of my friend's mom or f- my friend shared her mom's post. Super complicated there. But yeah, my friend's mom shared something and my friend shared what her mom posted. And what she wrote was, you walk around with your cup of coffee and suddenly someone passes, pushes you and makes your coffee spill everywhere. Why did your coffee spill? Because someone pushed me, replied the person that was asked the question. And the answer is, you spill the coffee because that's what you had in your cup. If it had been tea, you would have spilled tea. So what's in your cup? Not right now. I'm sure a lot of y'all, it's coffee. If you're doing the Daniel Fast, then it's probably water or some type of decaf tea. But truly, what is in your cup? If you don't understand that analogy, I'll break it down and make it a little bit more simple for you. So if you watch a lot of, and I always default to watching shows, but if you watch a lot of shows that have a lot of profanity in it, the likelihood of you cursing, when something goes wrong, is pretty high because that's all you're surrounding yourself with. That's what you're plugging into. That's essentially what you're drinking every day. You're drinking profanity. If you're always around people who smoke and drink, the likelihood of you being influenced to do so is extremely high. If you grew up in an environment where your parents or your siblings or whoever it may be, you see them whenever they endure difficult times or whenever they are challenged, they fall back into depression. The likelihood of you doing that is extremely high. So what is in your cup is basically what are you continuously feeding yourself? What are you surrounding yourself with? What are you allowing in your life to be okay? And you've said it's okay to respond that way because that's all you've seen. And it's extremely important. Because it shapes our character. It shapes who we are. If I have coffee, I will naturally spill coffee. I'm not going to spill tea. I'm not going to spill orange juice. Matter of fact, I don't like orange juice. But what's in your cup tells a lot about what actually is in your heart. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 12, verse 34, it says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's just a very fancy way of saying Whatever you fill your heart with will eventually come out. 
And I know some of y'all probably are thinking, Vashti, how many times are you going to talk about this topic? You've reiterated this topic several times in different ways. But here's the thing. Hear me out here. It's just so important to me. I value character. That's one of the biggest things that stands out to me in, in, in the friends that I have, the different types of character traits that they each uniquely have. And character is so important. Character says a lot about your upbringing. Character says a lot about what you're plugging into. Character says a lot about who your God is. So what are you plugging yourself into? This somewhat links into the whole, you know, telly God. But a lot of us, what we're plugging into is our telly God. We're plugging into our technology. We're plugging into shows. We're plugging into music. We're plugging into these things and we're consumed by it. And we don't realize that that's eventually what's going to slip out of our mouths. I always tell my husband, we will give an account of every idle word that comes out of our mouth. So sometimes we like to joke around. We like to poke fun at each other. And there comes a point where it goes a little bit too far and I tell him you know Jared at the end of the day while we may be having fun while we might be joking and you know pulling each other's leg at the end of the day words hurt and we have to give account of each idle word that comes out of our mouth so what's in your cup genuinely I want you to genuinely respond to that question what's in your your cup. And the only way to know what's in your cup is to identify what you are continuously consuming yourself or what is continuously consuming you. What's consuming you? Is it your phone? Is it a specific show? Is it a specific type of music? That whenever something happens or default is to respond a certain way, You know, a lot of times people feel like I'm a little bit too overboard here, but the music that you listen to shapes your attitude. That's why there are so many breakup songs out there for girls and guys who go through breakups, more so for girls because girls tend to default into the whole let me listen to Taylor Swift songs and just bask in all the breakupness. What are you plugging into? What is in your cup? So you have two choices to make. It's just two. Simple. Two simple choices. Either choose to fill yourself up with what's good or fill yourself up with what's bad. Philippians chapter 4 says what is good is what is true, what is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, what is admirable. If it's excellent or praiseworthy, those are the things we should think about. Those are the things we should be consumed by. And essentially, all of those things points us back to Jesus. I know this is controversial because I have a lot of friends who, you know, think very differently than I do. And that's great. I love them. And I hope they love that I think differently than they do, because that makes us so unique and that makes us who we are. But I personally don't believe that you can find Jesus in a song that has f-bombs in there i mean if you found jesus in a song that has f-bombs come at me and tell me your story and just prove me wrong but i genuinely don't feel i don't believe that you can find jesus in a song that has a bajillion cuss words in there you can't find jesus in pornography You can't find Jesus in shows that promote certain sins that we know, you and I both know, is completely wrong. You can find Jesus in things that are true, in things that are right, in things that are pure, in things that are admirable. That's where you find Jesus. And those are the things we should be filling our cups with. If we're consumed by reels on Instagram that continuously cuss, if that makes us giggle and laugh, then... Let me tell you something, friend. You're consuming yourself with the wrong thing. And it shows. It shows by the way we respond. It shows by the way, you know, our demeanor, the way we walk around. It clearly shows what we're filling ourselves with. And yes, you know, we go through different things in life. Life gets challenging and that that shows on the weight of our shoulder. But what spills out of our cup when life gets rough goes back to what we've been consuming ourselves or what has been consuming our time. 
to what's in your cup. How do you respond to your spouse? How do you respond to your mom, your dad? How do you respond to your friend? How do you respond to your boss? When someone bumps you or nudges you the wrong way, how do you respond? Do you immediately turn around and gossip behind their back? Do you drop a couple F-bombs here and there? Do you default to slandering and blasting them on Facebook and Instagram? What's in your cup? Very simple. Identify what's in your cup and replace it with Philippians 4. Nobleness, truth, righteousness, purity, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. Anything that is excellent and praiseworthy, think about these things. Fill your cup with these things. At the end of the day, you and I are going to give an account of every idle word that comes out of our mouth. At the end of the day, you and I are going to have to clean up whatever is spilt out of our hearts. And sometimes that can be ugly and messy. So two choices. Choose to fill yourself up with what's good. Or keep filling yourself up with what's bad. I can't force you, friend. That's your choice. But reality is, each trial we face, whether big or small, will reveal what's in our hearts. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me on Post Blog. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like button, follow button, share button, all the buttons to stay connected with the Post Blog podcast. Same time, same place next week. I love y'all. But remember, God loves you most.